So we back the final episode of the Cincinnati Stingers Miley here at NBT 17 the last episode and then this seemed another season of the Stingers franchise. It made a great year though we went and won the championship once again, but obviously this year is the last year, so we're building up to have a great year this year. They're basically our same old squad that's won us like back to back to back championships three times in a row. Obviously due to our man Chris Mayo and the emergence of Gar Snow, who's just so great so far. Got a thirty first overall, or at least believe thirty first overall, thirty first, thirty second kind of the range in the NBA draft few years ago, maybe 2040, and he's had a ball so far throughout his entire career so far, averaging 37 or around 37 points per game in last year, so I mean, this year he's opting for a big year when it comes to his points and so on, so this team, I believe, can go back to, you know, go a four-peat here when it comes to our championships once again, so maybe bring it back to another dynasty years, as we have Archie Wells, a point guard, Gar Snow, shooting guard, Chris Mayo, Kerr, Lawson, Reed, Brady, Newsom, Stefan, Steele, Campbell, and so on, so we gotta resign all those guys Snow, Kerr, Mayo, Wells, just everybody has to be resigned. So it's gonna be a big year for us, and kind of considering all we have to do this year. So starting off 17 0, 18 0, 19, 20, 21, we've won 23 games in a row to start off the season, but we lose one. Now we're 27 1 on the season. So great start off this season. I thought for sure we'd go maybe 82 0 again, but uh, we didn't so far. So 36 and 1 right now. We're killing it so far in the Eastern Conference. So our only really rival, I guess, so far this year is Boston. Boston. Boston, a great team though, like seriously, they have a great team, they have Mike Conley Jr., one of the greatest players of all time, at least considering to me just how based how well he's played against us every single time we've played him. So right now, 50-2 and two, and 51-3 and three going into the All-Star break, we do have two All-Stars, Ingar Snow and Craig Lawson, so at least we have those two guys, that's what I'm really hoping for every single season. So, it comes to dunk contest, nobody, 3 point contest, finally have somebody in Gar Snow, so finally the NBA showing some love to our shooting guard, Gar Snow. So, rest of that though, we do really have nothing against guess we did have Kyle Brady on the Stars team. So, MVP second is Gar Snow. First is Tyler Weaver, who is great so far for Memphis. And uh, second is Craig Lawson in DPOY. And third or fourth is Cardi Kerr when it comes to DPOY, too. So, we're going to resign Gar Snow. He accepts it. Archie Wells resigned him, too. And Chris Mayo going to sign him to a one year deal. Plus, we're going to resign Cardi Kerr three years. 35 mil per year. He accepts that. It's under the cap. We're good there. So, All-Star game, we do have, or at least all rookie stars game. Kyle Brady scores some points. And he doesn't win, or uh, Garson doesn't win the three point contest, but at least he scores a decent amount of points. Leads the Eastern Conference to a W there as Craig Lawson has 9 points and 10 rebounds. So, string up the last half of the season, 61 and 4. We're doing very well so far. On pace to win like 78 games. So, right going right here, we have 74, now 75, 76. We have win 77 games on the season. Tyler Weaver is your MVP over Garson this season. So, is down to those two in the final, but he will ultimately won. And six man, our DPOY, we have Craig Lawson. He's a DPOY for the fourth time in his career, so it's good to see Craig Lawson getting some love from the NBA finally, as he's one of the best defensive players in the, in the game. But Logan Schmidt gets the Coach of the Year award over our head coach. It doesn't make any sense how he has 66 wins, he's second in the East, we're number one in the East with 77 wins, and he isn't a coach of the year, it doesn't make any sense. The Boston Celtics have always been great, but it looks like Gar Snow is second team, all NBA, third team, finally Craig Lawson back on there. I don't know why he's not on there every single year, but Cody Kerr and Craig Lawson are first team DP, our defensive team, so I guess it's pretty cool to see that. And the rest, we have really nothing on there. Let's move on to the plot, or at least our regular season statistics for this season. So our first round matchup is against the Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks 41 and 41. I think we might have an easy time against them, just considering how great our roster is. We have they have all 77s, 81s, kind of a decent roster though. I like their roster, but other than that, compared to our team, our team is 77 wins. They have 41. We almost have double the amount of wins in their season. I mean, it should be a breeze, right? We went 1-0. Now, now we're 1-0 on the playoffs so far. So we're in game one. So Gar Snow, 47 points, 17 rebounds. This man is a beast when it comes to double doubles and triple doubles. But game two, we win game two, up to nothing. You're 135, 115 win for us as Gar Snow tripled over there. 33 points, 10 rebounds, 11 assists for a triple double. And going on to game three, 
We win game three, we're up three nothing here easily against the Atlanta Hawks. We just run by almost fifty points. Actually, no, we did just run by fifty points, almost sixty points there. So basically, we just run in that game. Now going to game four, we're all going to go and sweep the Atlanta Hawks. We easily do 122, 96 final. We just run in the last game, and we move on to the next round, the semifinals. So R2 Well stepping up there at point guard, playing very well, dishing out the ball to our man Gar Snow. But get round two, we're facing the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls, they have a uh, they have a pretty good roster, I guess. They'd give us a good run for our money just based on how good their roster is. But the Celtics facing off against the Wizards. But the Boston, the, the Chicago Bulls, 91 overall point guard. Their roster is great coming off the bench. They have a few 80s. And they have one injury, we have none. So it's weird to see us with no injuries because usually, usually we have tons. But they're up one nothing here. Gar Snow, 29 points. But Farley, though, he is a big difference maker at point guard. Now they're up 2 nothing here against us. As Snow puts up 26 and 10 and 6. As we cannot stop them, Farley, 46 points. So if we want any chance of coming back, we'd win game three, obviously. We do in Chicago, 129, 119 final for us. So we take game three. So now it's a 2 1 series here. We got him in the next game as our man Farley puts up 52 points against us. So great player, obviously. Gotta give some respect to him as game four now. We gotta win game four if you wanna do anything here. We do 143, 133 final. So we win an OT as Snow puts up 33 points and Wells with a double double. So I'm loving this like resilience. We do not refuse to go and get destroyed in the playoffs that's what i like about our team so going into game five gotta win this one to take an edge and we do 121 115 final win by six points so garson with 32 points lost in a double double there as we came back from being down 0-2 now we're up 3-2 here we're going back to chicago we gotta go and win this one if you want to move on and we do 126 108 final we're moving on to the ecf once again so garson obviously great games by him he's been the, our top player every single game so far we're facing the boston celtics of all the teams in the nba in the eastern conference so Mike Conley, he's a great player. Maybe one of his last years. I believe he's like 36, 37. But right now, they had, we have no injuries. So it's good to see that. That no teams have any injuries. It's a fair matchup between our two teams. No one's injured. So game one, we win game one, 108, 86. Finally destroy him in game one. Somehow out of all the possible ways. But Baxter had a great game. But other than that, no Conley Jr. really stepped up there. As game two, we are still in Cincinnati. We beat him 112, 96 final. As Mayo puts up 21 points. Garston 18 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, almost triple double. 1 rebound and 1 assist away from that. But game three now, we're going to sit the Boston. And we got to go and win this one. But we win this one by 3 points. 115, 112 final. Now we're up 3 nothing here against the Boston Celtics in the ECF. So we got them on their knees. We got to go and just strike them down and move on to the NBA Finals. Get them off our back. But they win this one. They're, they're refusing to go down. 116, 107 final. That's a 3-1 series lead. And 3-1 series leads, they seem to always get break it broken in real life and in 2K. And we win this one by 2 points. 128, 126 final. We're moving on to the NBA Finals. So... I knew it was going to happen, but I didn't really think that we allow them one game, even though their team is very good. I thought for sure we may be able to take them down to four, but moving on to the NBA Finals, we're facing off against the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets, they do not have Kevin Durant last time we faced off against them, so now they might be easier to beat as they have Peyton, they have McLeod, they have a few other great players coming off their bench, but other than that, I don't know how they won 60 games in the West. It must have been a very easy, easy conference. As they have three injuries, we have absolutely none, so... It's it's in our favor basically to win this one as game one in this one we lose 133 120 final I don't know what's happening as Garston puts up 54 points but our team does not win this one it makes no sense as Peyton puts up 64 for the Denver Nuggets now game two still in Cincinnati we take this one 132 110 final as we go have a great game still 41 points he's just destroying his shooting guard matchup as Peyton puts up 39 so one one series leader going to Denver trying to take this one and we do 133 93 final as Snow puts up 39 and 10 and 7 and 5 when it comes to all the stats. So the stat line perfect. Here is we're now up 2-1 to one here against the Denver Nuggets, still in Denver for this game. And we win this 104-92 final. Now we're up 3-1 in this series. And again, the 3-1 leads. I'm so worried about having a 3-1 lead just based on what happened to the Warriors, what happened to us a few years back. So, I mean, it happens. As we're in Cincinnati trying to take them down, we lose 125-111 final. Still puts up 26 and uh, lost puts up 20 and 11 for double-double. Mayo 20 and 10 for double-double. And we cannot win this one. I don't know how we don't win this one. As Peyton puts up 55 points for them. So Peyton, we got to take him down if we want to go in this one, win this one. As now we're up, we're up 3-2 here in the series. Going back to Denver trying to win this one. But we will lose, but it looks like a few points there. And a few turns into a ton. 143, 123 win for them. 20 points. We obliterate, get obliterated. As so has a great game. But going into this last game, game seven of the NBA Finals, we gotta go and win this one if you want to win another NBA championship in the Stingers franchise. Won the last episode. Down the middle. 
Here's Wells. Lock at six. Here's Snow. And a big bounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. Cincinnati leads by 14. McLeod. And they've done it for new NBA champions. What a moment it is right now to see the team who played so well together enjoying this NBA championship moment. Well, this is a historic moment for these players and that coaching staff. And trust me, Kevin, they're going to enjoy every minute of what's coming to them, a night they will never forget for the rest of their lives. And seeing this team come together over the course of the season and on into the playoffs, what a joy. I mean, there is no better champion the league could have asked for. And a pleasure here at 2K Sports to be with you all season long. Good night, everyone. Due to resiliency, we go and win the NBA championship. So another championship on the mantle here, as we have like maybe 15 or 16 championships in this franchise mode. We've won more championships, more than half the season we've won championships in this entire simulation, at least 30 day season. So man, it's crazy to see we won this one. Paying 44 points, he was easily the best player on Denver. We could not win any games without him going and scoring 40. So great game by the Denver Nuggets, but we win this one as we're NBA champs once again for the fourth time in a row. So Garth Snow, finals MVP, obviously 35.9 points per game in that final. So I mean, he's a big difference maker, 93 overall, great player. But let's go and check out our playoff stats. Moving on to retirements, though, we do have a few players retiring, I guess, like Mike Conley Jr. So Conley Jr. spent his entire career on Boston. I love when players spend their entire career on one team, but uh, an all-star only once in a two-time champ, so I don't know how he was only an all-star once. It made no sense. He should have been an all-star team every single year, but we do have Karen Ross, 15-time all-star, one-time NBA. That's Hall of Fame numbers right there, obviously. So next up is Harrington, three-time all-star, and there's a few other players like 10-time all-star Olsen, so he's easily a Hall of Fame right there. If you're in the all-star game 10 times, we have Paxson. We have a few players that are NBA champs or second-team all-rookie as we have another four-time all-star there. Could be in, in maybe a jersey retirement. I have no idea why he went be with Joshua camera though he's easily going to be in the hall of fame and maybe going to be retired by the new york knicks had tons of years with them but staff returns you have jacob park on there if jerry stackhouse for the knicks and we do have a few other players like austin strong or not players coaches austin strong and benjamin moore we move on to the next thing which is hall of fame of karen ross joshua cameron and mel olsen all played over 1,000 games and all average over 20 points per game in their entire career so all great players maybe top 100 when it comes to points per game in a career so moving on to the next thing which is jersey retirements we have a ton of these we have karen ross mel olsen bradford harrington mike conley jr joshua cameron Cameron and Noel Wesley. So I like to see tons of jersey retirements every single year, and I like to see that Conley Jr. got his jersey retired by Boston, even though he had only one All Star appearance in his entire career. But moving on to the draft lottery, obviously the lottery, the top two players in this draft are all over 80 overall. So I mean, whoever gets one of those two players in the top two is going to be great. But Nets and Raptors get first and second. We got to go and get one of their picks if you want to go and stay a great player for the next generation of Stingers talent. So we can make a push for the first overall pick. We have a few first. We do have uh, Thaw and Reed, and we're, they accept the trade. So we actually go and get the first overall pick in this draft. Let's go see. We select in 2046 NBA draft.
The Atlanta Hawks select the 19-year-old shooting guard from Croatia. With the third pick in the NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Wesley Bowden from the University of New Mexico. With the fourth pick in the NBA draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Leo Graham from Penn State University. Have a trade to announce. With the fifth pick in the NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Drew Rice from the University of Pittsburgh. We have a trade to announce. With the sixth pick in the NBA draft, the 21-year-old point guard from Nigeria. With the seventh pick in the NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Edwin Lewis from the University of Virginia. We have a trade to announce. With the eighth pick in the NBA draft, the Toronto Raptors select the 19-year-old center from Boston College. With the ninth pick in the NBA draft, the Dallas Mavericks select Corey Clayton from DePaul University. With the 10th pick in the NBA Draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Dante Wheeler from Michigan State University. So you pick Cody Wilkins, first overall, 83 overall, 20 years old. He can play small for it, so once Chris Mayo moves out of the picture, retires next year most likely, if we do another season, then it looks like our man Cody Wilkins will go and basically take over his role at small forward. So next up is Ranchich, who is a great player though, second overall. They get an easy, like great talent there obviously with the Atlanta Hawks, making that great trade, the Raptors. So the Hawks in us, we realize potential, we go and trade for the first and second overall picks. But Cody Wilkins though, barely any negatives to him at all. He has all strength and no weakness. So I like to see that though as the rest of the picks. They're pretty much average, I guess. They're better than average, I guess, when it comes to draft classes. There's, there's tons of 70s now instead of just 65, 63s, and so on. So our last pick, though, we didn't really pick anybody. I didn't want to show it because it was pretty bad. 61 overall, 21 years old. It's kind of a bad pick. So anyway, let's move on to the next thing, which is the second round, and there's no one good there. So options, we extend an option to Brady and Campbell, but options in the NBA, nobody declines except we do have Cam Grant decline his, and your free agents are Eric Walton, 88 overall, 32 years old, at power forward. We have York, we have Dalk, Fowler, Grant, and a whole bunch of great guys are all 80 overall and above. So great free agent class here. We're going to go and try and snag somebody. As we're going to go and change Cody Wilkins' position to small forward so we can go and take over our man Chris Mayo's position, position. But Eric Walton wants $9.3 million. Might as well go for him, I guess, as why not? 88 overall, and we're number one option over the Raptors, who he spent his entire career with so far. So our, we're basically the Golden State Warriors in a, way, in a bad way. But Eric Walton signed with us as he's a five-time All-Star. we got to go and sign this guy, even though... 
He's 80 overall, 80 overall. We could probably form the greatest team of all time, and we do as we sign him. So next draft class is Don Alho House, 84 overall, 19 years old, small forward. So great pick there. Maybe I'm not gonna get him, obviously, if we do another season. So next thing up is uh, we have Gene McGee Jr. So Gene McGee, don't remember the senior guy, but 79 overall Jr. looks great in the next draft. But draft that's a roster after the 30 seasons in the NBA. I guess on this episode offer right here. Make sure to like, subscribe for more Stingers franchise mode, maybe in the future. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.